Okay. Okay. Now I think we're started. Welcome back to my kitchen. Uh, my name is Courtney Handel and I am uh, one of the Everside wellness practitioners, health and wellness coach at our Waukesha clinic. And thank you so much for joining. Today we are, as part of our healthier holiday challenge, making um, Festivus meatloaf or holiday meatloaf, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm really excited about this because I have a lot of fun twists for it. Um, and I think some fun twists for meatloaf in general. Also, personally, I do not like ketchup, and that really turns me off from regular meatloaf. Um, so I'm looking forward to this as kind of a fun alternative and still a way to make meatloaf for people in my house who really do like meatloaf, um, but also don't really care about the ketchup part so much. So um, going to get started with just a couple tips for you before we really get started. And this is for, um, in general, anytime you are doing cooking and some of these you might've heard in previous cooking demo demos, but I think it's good to just circle back to these kind of basic things every now and then. Uh, the first thing being read the all the directions first that it can be really helpful so that you understand like oh this should be frozen or not frozen or um you know you have you you're you're not like hands deep in something and then realize you need to add something to it or you need you don't have the right uh measurement tools out um or maybe you're missing a key ingredient and suddenly you need to figure out what can you substitute for that so really helpful especially if you're reading you know like a cookbook or even a blog um a lot of times they have some really helpful tips about how to ensure you're getting the end product that you're looking for uh, of course, also clean, make sure your prep area is clean and your hands are, are clean, um, getting out all the things that you're going to need that kind of goes, I guess I kind of talked about that with the reading, but making sure you have the things. And then too, with the ingredients, knowing, you know, if there's something that you are going to substitute because you don't have some of the ingredients or you're going to substitute because of personal preference or needs. Um, I think that's helpful to determine and figure out how you're going to make that work before you get started. Uh, again, because sometimes that involves a little research and that's easier to do before your hands are covered in whatever it might be um, or you're, you know, working over the stove and can't really leave it. Um, and of course, washing your your produce and stuff like that. Um, get the oven set if you're using the oven. Uh, prepping pans, and I I'm gonna show a tip for that in just a second. And again, I add washing hands again because I think it's good um, to avoid spreading germs and bacteria that we wash kind of frequently, especially as you touch different things that you know tend to carry germs. Um, and of course, have fun and, and make the recipe work for you. A lot of times I like to play music when I'm cooking um, and, you know, chopping vegetables. You can buy a lot of them pre-chopped to save time. Um, but I really like to, I enjoy chopping vegetables. I see it as kind of therapeutic. So I prefer to, you know, if I'm doing that, I want to make sure I have the time and space to do that. And sometimes playing some nice music in the background just makes it all the more enjoyable. So before I flip over to um, the next slide, I just wanted to show one little tip here for um, prepping pans. And this is something that I read in a cookbook and I was actually reading the cookbook more than just the recipe, um, just as an easy way to grease pans, saving your butter wrappers. So I will save them in like a silicone or Ziploc baggie in the fridge, right where I keep my butter. And then as I need to grease a pan, um, I just take one out and you just really rub it around. And as it starts to warm up under your finger, there's always some butter residue left on that, almost always I should say, left on that um, piece of paper. Um, so then you'll, you, you know, you can get in all the crevices really easily and you can just wipe it all around. So works, works like a charm really. Of course, for certain pans, it might be more of a pain to do this, but um, I find it to be just a really good use of something that I already have and I was just going to throw out anyway. Um, so, you know, one, I guess it's using more of what you have and reducing waste a little bit. Um, then I don't need to, to get that spray out and, or anything like that. So that's my tip 
that I wanted to share there. And we will go ahead. Here is the um, recipe. I will have the, the original recipe is linked in the uh, not show notes uh, in the in the description for you. Um, I also have I kind of adapted this recipe based on another recipe, which is something I do quite often if I'm going to make something. Um, a lot of times I'll look at that recipe and then I'll look at maybe another recipe that's similar, um, maybe has a slightly different method or some different ingredients that I maybe prefer. And a lot of times I'll just mix the two together. And the nice thing about cooking is that it's not a it doesn't need to be quite as scientific. And so it allows for a lot more of that. The other tip I have here is, so I am using a, a glass and then I've got a brown pan. And so there's going to be a difference. If the pans are different, there might be a difference in how they bake. So that's important to keep in mind. And then a silicone pan could make it easier to pop out. But at the end of this recipe, it does um, suggest broiling and broiling is not great for silicone. Um, it's only for a couple minutes. So if you did for just a minute or two, it might be OK. Um, I've never tried that, but something to keep in mind there. So go ahead and review. If you um, need to get out your ingredients still, if you're cooking along with me um, or wanted to start your chopping, feel free to do that. Uh, you don't need to pause quite yet. I'm going to ramble on about a couple more things here. So you can go ahead and do that while I am talking or like I said, feel free to um, stop and pause. So again, with this creative freedom, I kind of already spoke to this a little bit, but um, just considering when you're looking at a recipe or something you want to make, considering your audience uh, is helpful, you know, who's going to eat it and what do they like or not like, and how can you shift that recipe to make it more palatable? It doesn't mean that you shouldn't add things that they don't like. It's just a way to, you know, are there ways you can hide things? <laughs> um also consider what's available to you, what you have on hand that maybe needs to be used up. Is there a way you could add that to your recipe? And then also how much time? Again, I mentioned, you know, buying your vegetables pre-chopped is a really good way to save time. Um, and a lot of times for people can ensure that they actually make the recipe because then they don't have to have the extra time for that. Um, so again, different things that you can do, um, increasing nutrition. So today, for example, I had some celery in my fridge that I needed to use. So I finally chopped that and I'm going to saute that with the onions. And I'm going to show you a trip for a trick for friendly chopping onions in just a second. Um, another thing that I am doing today is instead of doing the full 20 ounces of ground turkey, which this one, this meatloaf is calls for, um, I am also adding um, some lentils. And really you wanna do, uh, like if you're using lentils, pre-cooking them, or I just bought, have canned lentils on hand, um, green and brown lentils tend to be best for meat substitution kind of things. Also, I will say, so with the turkey, um, it was 16 ounces and then the can of lentils is 15 ounces. And so that ends up being about 31 ounces instead of 20 ounces, right? When you look at the original recipe it was 20 ounces of turkey. So since that's a little bit more, um, I increased some of the other things just a little bit. And so I'm going to divide my stuff out and actually make two loaves of meatloaf. Hopefully it turns out delicious because I'm going to have two. Um, and then my intention is going to be to uh, freeze one to serve later. Um, let's see, what else do we have? I'm um, just looking at, oh, and obviously turkey, you know, traditional meatloaf a lot of times is ground beef, but you could use, so you could use that. Um, you could also use uh, venison if you have that. Um, and then... Let's see, The on this recipe, it did have other like vegetables to serve it with. Um, I'm not going to demo those today, but I am going to encourage you to, if you don't like those vegetables that it's showing, um, consider your alternative options. There's a lot of great options that you could serve this with. Uh, one thing that I think would be fun, since this is a little bit healthier of a recipe, I would like to make, if I had cauliflower I think I would make a mashed cauliflower to kind of be like a healthier mashed potato version and adding some nutritional yeast to that cauliflower can really make it have a cheesy uh nutty kind of flavor and some garlic that would be really good um and then the other thing too is consider like what you want the final product to taste like 
Is there any flavor that you can highlight with herbs? Um, or for example, I am going to be using, since I'm making two loaves, I'm going to use two different kinds of balsamic vinegar. Um, so one, I, I really love going to um, Orodiovia Oliva. <laughs> um, they have just a ton of different uh, vinegars and oils and stuff. And so I am using their uh, dark balsamic hickory smoked uh, for one loaf. And then for the other one, I'm going to use a uh, fig dark balsamic. So um, we'll see what kind of different uh, flavors come up with that. Now let's go ahead and I'm going to um, stop sharing this so that you have oops yes i think that will work okay perfect so hopefully you can see a little bit more now um and i'm just going to show you my tip for chopping onions so just to make it easy to quickly dice it uh so really you're going to cut it in half but cut it so that you've got this part still attached so slice it in half i already have half chopped um and then once you do that, it's really easy to peel. And honestly, these peelings, a lot of times I'll even take off this first layer um, underneath the more papery peel. And I like to save these to put in the freezer and save for making a vegetable stock. Um, so I'm going to save those. I also have my, my rosemary sticks here and some of the dry ends of the celery. So that's going to be great. And my vegetable stock, I'll put that to the side. The other stuff went in to my compost bin. I'm just going to cut that end off. All right, and then let me get this aligned. Okay, back up here so you can see it. So you've got your half here. You got the butt attached. The butt is probably not the, the proper term, but that's the term I'm going to use today. Um, so then I like to take it sitting like that, and I just like to make some little slits. Again, kind of holding it with your fingertip going down. Let me move this closer so you can see. So I'm cutting and I'm going to go all the way up like that. And you could even start from the top if you prefer. It doesn't have to go all the way through if that's kind of tricky for you. Um, just doing the best you can to get these first cuts in. And you can see I'm kind of taking this at an angle and gradually working my way up the onion. Again, holding the onion instead of like with the pads of your finger, with your fingertips um, can really be helpful for securing it a little bit more. Okay, so once you slice up that way, now you're going to turn the onion and you're going to slice so you can see the butts here. You're going to make those same little slices just like this. Again, kind of at maybe about a 45 degree angle, slicing most of the way through, but not cutting into that uh, onion butt, as I am so lovingly referring to it. Um, I wish I could remember like a more proper term for it, but hopefully that is uh, suitable for you. So as I'm doing this, you can see I'm already starting to get these just really small pieces. And if you, you know, the, the closer you make these cuts, obviously the finer it will be. The other option too is, um, and this probably isn't even very good because ideally it's staying together a little more. Uh, you can kind of just keep going ahead and chopping this. Uh, one thing I am going to do before I continue just chopping away here is I am going to um, get my stove turned on. I do have oil already in my pan. But I know I want that, want that to heat up. So I'm going to get that going. And then you're just going to go ahead and slice regular. See, you've got pretty much all of it is going to be in those little, little dices. So saves a lot of time. Again, same with this little end, end chunk. I mean, I could cut some more off of there. Um, but I'll just throw that into a freezer bag with the rest of the scraps. And then once I've got like about a gallon size bag full of scraps from onions, celery, carrots, any fresh herbs, uh, then I will go ahead and make that into a vegetable stock. 
Um, and then maybe I'll, since I'm talking about it, I will put a link for a recipe to do that as well in the description. So I'm just going through and looking for any pieces that are maybe a little bit longer. I just want to chop them up. And again, I mean, I suppose really how fine you chop them is probably a personal preference. If you have really picky eaters or people who are going to eat this who are sensitive to textures, um, this might be something that you want to spend a little bit more time finally chopping. But I think that's pretty good. So I am going to just add this to my celery onion bowl here. Try not to drop any in the counter. And while I'm doing this, let's see. Um, okay. Did looking at my notes, and it looks like I showed you some the buttering thing earlier than I meant to because I wanted to do that while my pan was heating up. But that's okay. All right. So Let's go ahead and I'm just going to pop over to the stove quick and see if the oil is heating up. Um, and then I'm going to add the onion and celery. Just uh, give the pan a little tip here to spread the oil around and it feels pretty warm. So I'll go ahead and add the onion, celery. And this and I'm stir it around here to get it all coated and spread out. So that's going to need to uh, saute for a little bit. Let's see. Um, after it starts to get translucent, then we will add the mushrooms for a few minutes, which I have already nicely finely chopped here, and then also the finely chopped rosemary. So I'm going to put those over here. By my celery and onion saute so that they're ready um, when I need them. I'm also going to set this aside. Scraps so they're out of my way. And my pan. All right, so while the uh, onions and celery are sauteing, I'll go over there and check it in a little bit and give it a little stir. But I'm just going to go ahead and get started on the turkey part. Let me tip it. So you can see I already got my turkey in the bowl here and I did add salt and pepper and um, also added uh, this. I like this seasoning um, mushroom and company. Uh, I just thought since I am, it's going to bring that kind of umami flavor. Um, and since I am substituting some of the meat, I'm not doing quite as much meat. I'm adding in lentils and of course mushrooms as the recipe already calls for. I just thought this might give it a little extra boost uh, to give that umami flavor that um, the meat would generally bring on its own. So I'm just going to mix in the, the salt and pepper first a little bit. And then I'm just going to go ahead and add my garlic here. Um, and it says fresh garlic. To be honest, I had some uh, minced, like pre-minced garlic that needed to get used up. So that's what I am doing. Seemed silly to buy fresh garlic when I had some that needs to be used. So that, and then I've got my eggs. And because I'm doing a little bit extra instead of just the two eggs, I did go to three eggs. Um, I'm not doing quite double, so I didn't go four. I think three is perfect. If you can't eat eggs, you could substitute, and I think it would work just fine substituting um doing if you mix ground flaxseed and water i cannot remember the exact proportions right now um, but mixing that together that can be an egg substitute and then let me mix those a little bit and in the recipe it does say at this point to add the the balsamic vinegar um at this point as well since i am um Going to do two different kinds. I'm going to mix this stuff first and then divide it into two different bowls. And then uh, after I add my veggies to this mixture, divide it and then I will add the, the vinegar. It's not really going to matter. And then 
again, not written in the recipe that's on there, but because I'm using lentils, um, and I should say that the lentil part was inspired by a, a different recipe that I looked up, um, and so I will also include that. I hear the sizzling, so I'm going to go over here and check on this. Just turn the slate on. Okay. All right, just giving the onions a little stir here. Um, of course, if the like two things at once is too much for you, it's fine to just do one at a time. But um, I just wanted to kind of get things moving along here. So, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So, I will add also in the description. Uh, the recipe that I kind of gauged off of um, for the lentils. Um, and you might be thinking, why lentils? Why are you adding lentils? Why don't you just do the full amount of turkey? One is because I had lentils uh, already in my pantry. And two, I just wanted to make it a little bit more um, plant forward, I guess. Not that I there's anything wrong with eating meat, but um, I I wanted to make it more plant forward, and I also think um, it was a kind of a good way to show you uh, different ways to adjust recipes. Personally, I prefer to eat more plants than meat, so that helps that part as well. And lentils are a great uh, thing to add to your recipes. They have a lot of fiber, um, magnesium, and a whole bunch of other different vitamins and minerals. Um, and they are low in the glycemic index. So they're a complex carbohydrate. They aren't going to raise your blood sugar quite so much. So, um, And they have a great source of protein too. So here you can see I've got it all mixed up together. Um, once I have my vegetables done sauteing, I will add them to this mixture. And then, like I said, I'm going to divide it in between two bowls and then add um, my balsamic vinegar. Let's see. This one will be the hickory smoked and this one will be the fig. Awesome. Let's check on these. Okay, so they those are starting to get translucent. Um, just need a little bit more time, I think. Uh, again, personal preference thing. I do want them to be more soft so that they're not as well detected in the meatloaf, um, especially for some children that can be helpful. So just to avoid me babbling on and this recording taking longer than it needs to, I'm going to pause for a little bit. And then when I am, once the uh, onions and celery are translucent, I will be adding the mushrooms for about five to 10 minutes until they start to brown. And then I'm going to add the rosemary just for a couple of minutes and then shut that off. And then I will add it to this mixture um, and then divide it. So. I will pick up with all that in just a little bit, um, just to save us all some time here. So keep doing your thing and I'll be right back. All right, so the mushrooms are cooked. I added it to the bowl, stirred it all up with the, you know, the vegetables, mushrooms. And then what I did is I, because I was dividing it between two loaves, I um, kind of just flattened it out I cut a line across the middle with my spatula and then I scooped out half into one pan and then the rest into the other um, or one bowl and then they kept the rest in that. Then I added the, each different balsamic vinegar and um, put it in my pans. Of course, if I wasn't adding two different balsamic vinegars, um, then you could also just add that right away and, and still divide it amongst the two pans. Um, then at the end, you're going to put that rosemary garnish on top. Let's see if you can hear, see a little better here. There you go. Um, and then we're going to just cover each one with tin foil and we're going to bake it in the oven uh, for about 55 minutes at 350 degrees. Do that after so you don't have to listen to me and then um after that 55 minutes or so um you're gonna bump it up to 400 for 10 minutes and then um option to take the 
boil off and uh, broil for under three minutes. Um, one thing to keep in mind, like I said, if you're using a darker, darker pan, and I've got both, <laughs> which is probably not ideal, um, but I am going to set it for a, um, the first one probably about 50 minutes, and then I'll check this one. The dark pan might get done faster than the silver pan. So let me throw up that final uh, slide here. Um, great. So uh, I'm going to get these in the oven and I will uh, come back here and show you the final product, but I know that's going to take a little bit and I just wanted to share these couple other things with you. Uh, so be sure to check out our other cooking videos here on YouTube, um, our podcast, and then hit me up if you're interested in some individual support for coaching. Um, and for those of you that have seen all you need to see, uh, be on your way and I hope your meatloaf turns out great. And otherwise, you can hang out and keep watching for a little bit more and I'll show you the final product of this meatloaf. Okay, so meatloaf is done and it looks beautiful. Here we go. You can see it looks very similar to regular meatloaf. And I did cut a slice out. You can see it looks similar. Um, and I tasted it and it tastes really good. I think the other thing too that I would do if um, if it's dry or just for a little extra zip, I would uh, have on the table the uh, balsamic vinegar just for a little extra drizzle. So that was our holiday meatloaf. I hope you enjoy and like I said, hope you have great success and leave any um, any tips that you have for when you make this in the comments and like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks. Happy holidays, everyone.